Today, I have a puzzle that is great for a very wide range of ages, um, probably grade two to grade eight. And we're going to start with asking Susan, a grade two student. Susan, we're going to start with the number zero, but you have to name uh, so, some small number on, on here. Choose something small because we have to fit in three numbers onto this whole scale. So you have to choose the next smallest one, two. Okay. Uh, Henry, what do you want to choose? Five. Okay. And Gertrude. Okay. Seven. Got it. Okay. What do we do with these numbers? Well, we're going to subtract them in all possible pairings. So first of all, the students get to do seven minus zero. So you can see the color code there, seven minus zero, and that's seven. Good. And you can go around student after student. Uh, I don't have hands raised in my classrooms. So I make sure that every child contributes. Um, next one is seven minus two, that's five. Next one is seven minus five, that's two. Next one is five minus zero, that's five. And five minus two, that's going to be three. And lastly, we're going to have two minus zero, and that's going to be two. So we have six different differences, and those are the results. Now, we have failed here because you really want all of these numbers to be different uh, on the bottom, all of these differences to be different. So here we have two twos and two fives, so we failed. So we're going to immediately start again and try to find a group of four numbers, always including zero, so that all of these are different. Okay, again, I'm gonna just go around the classroom asking people, and this time they come up with these numbers here. Zero, one, five, and eight. We're gonna keep the colors the same uh, here. It depends what age group you're dealing with. If you wanna keep the same colors or different, does, or just keep it black, um, doesn't, doesn't matter, of course. Okay, so here are the numbers. Are they all different this time? Well, eight minus zero is eight. And next would be eight minus one, that's seven. Next would be eight minus five, that's three. Next would be five minus one. No, five minus zero, that's five. Five minus one, that's four. And one minus zero is one. So this time they're all different. Let's put them in order. There we go. Okay. So our numbers that we started with, the zero, one, five, and eight, we can categorize them based on the pattern of the result. So the, the resulting pattern is purple, green, blue, blue, green, green. Okay, so let's let's put those in there. So we, can, we have a little box and that box holds all of the uh, four sets of numbers that have this pattern. So let, let's look at another, uh, there might be other sets. Do not emphasize this slide. It's going to confuse young kids right away, but just hint at it. So you show it and then it's gone. Okay, now we're just going to try it again. Um, go ahead, uh, Jamie, tell me a number. Yeah, I know zero is in there. Of course, zero is in there. Give me another number. Okay, one, good, six, and nine. Okay, so got this one. Nine minus zero is nine. And we, again, have this full set. And again, this time we have to reorganize. And let's put, where do we, um, what do we, what box does 0169 go in? It goes in the same box, right? It goes in the exact same box as we had before. So now we have two in there. Your first task for your grade two to four classroom is to see, can you fill all of these? If not, which ones can you fill? Uh, you can only use numbers zero to nine. So this is a great exploration of two things. Subtraction, very little, itsy bitsy subtraction, but lots of it. But even more so, it's organization. You have to organize, or the kids have to organize themselves to say, ah, I found a solution for this box in the top right. Oh, I this girl's find a solution for a box on the lower left. So you have to organize, or the students have to organize. It turns out that five or six of these boxes are impossible to fill, even if you go beyond nine. And that's something that's good to show for your grade seven and eight kids getting into algebra. Okay, but obviously not for grade twos. Um, which of these bo boxes are impossible? But first of all, even your grade seven and eight students, they're trying to just fill them. 
okay? And then you keep a straight face and you tell those grade seven and eight kids, go ahead, fill them all. What are you, lazy? Come on. So you can, you can joke with them like that, but actually you know that they're impossible. Now I'm not gonna show you which ones are impossible because those five or six that are impossible, that's kind of fun to discover. Next, what happens if instead of using subtraction, we use uh, division? Oh, there's, uh, okay, there, I didn't mean to show you the results, but uh, those are all of the possible solutions. Um, so there you go, uh, I, I should have, uh, uh, the, the ones at the bottom are of course the impossible ones. So there, I've, I've given you the, the solution. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Okay, um, we can also uh, do this with division. So this would be good for kids in grades four to um, four to eight. And again, we can choose. This time we don't start at zero because that's uh, um, that's maybe not quite as interesting um, uh, because they they all have to be different. And zero divided by two, zero divided by six, and zero divided by nine. All, it's all zero. So it's because of that constraint that you need to start with one. Okay, so we're, we're going to choose numbers one to ten or one to nine and see what we can come up with. So here, um, this is my symbol for division. So this is one ninth and this is two ninths, this is six ninths, and this is one sixth, and this is two sixths and this is one half. There we go. Okay, uh, again, let's shuffle them up now to make sure that we've got them or organized biggest to smallest. Um, and whenever we do that, we find out that we actually are in the same uh, location as uh, the ones before. Well, that's not quite true, but we, we've, it, it looks somewhat similar. Looking for the similarity between subtraction and division is fascinating. So that's something else that your kids might want to look at. That's probably just for the top kids in your class, the real keeners. Um, you can use algebra to show which ones of these are impossible as well. So enjoy uh, both of these puzzles, this wide spectrum of puzzles. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can you can even even think about extending it, but I think this is rich enough for ninety nine point nine percent of kids. Enjoy. Take care.